Sets. Now that I have your attention, here's an interesting word for you, cohabitation. In other words, moving in with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Sounds like a fire idea, right? Let's see. Team Reeves. I ain't even gonna hold y'all. When I was a kid, I thought moving in with a girl was a great idea, but I also didn't understand a lot of things surrounding that simply because I was a kid. Now, I grew up in a black church and the culture of that church wasn't built on toxicity and telling people they were going to hell as we see some bad churches do. But our pastor and elders of the church called out things that needed to be addressed. They called living with your boyfriend or girlfriend shacking up. And this was something that was frowned upon. The part I was never taught though was the why behind it. Why is it frowned upon? Why is it bad? Now that I have matured, learned the dynamics of relationships, and what marriage actually represents, I now have an answer for the why. I'll just start with the biggest answer, sex before marriage. Sex outside of marriage is a loaded topic that I am not here to talk about in this video, but I can easily name off some negative consequences of it, such as soul ties, STDs and STIs, unplanned pregnancies, late night trips to CVS to get a plan B. Yeah, I'm in your business. But before I say anything else, I want to state that I am a Christian and I am primarily speaking to people who proclaim to be Christian. If you are not a Christian, by all means, I am not holding you to a Christian standard. If you want to move in with your little boo and your side piece, have at it. If you believe in living together before marriage, currently doing it, did it, or thinking about doing it, I'm 100% not here to condemn you or judge you. But I do wanna map out some things that usually come with cohabitation. Cohabitating plants a seed of non-commitment in your mind. What this means is if things don't go how you like, you can just get up and leave. You can test drive the car and take it back when you're done with it. Instead of learning to compromise and work through differences, you will always have an easy out. So when you finally get married to someone and you start having conflict arise, your first instinct will be to leave because that's the habit you formed in your dating days. But that's not going to fly in marriage. Here are some real life statistics that you can literally Google right now about cohabitation. And they come from secular studies, meaning it's not related to church. One study shows that couples who live together before marriage have a 46% higher chance of divorce when compared to those that don't. Another study shows that that over 60% of couples who live together before marriage will not marry. And of the 40% that do marry, five out of six will be divorced within three years. So the logical question to ask after this is why are these numbers so high when it makes sense for a couple to move in together. One of the reasons is that men typically see moving in together as guaranteed convenient sex and a way to test drive the relationship. Whereas women, typically see moving in together as the next step towards marriage. Both of these views usually play out to be problematic. The couple makes a big financial, emotional, and sexual investment in one another, and the more time they spend in that relationship, the harder it is to get out. And if they do get out, it's so much baggage that they have to carry after the fact. So what usually ends up happening is the couple lives together for five, six, seven years until one of them is like, hey, why don't we marry? So they basically slide into marriage instead of being intentional about it. And another point to make off of that is the man has no motivation to make you his wife if he's already getting every single privilege that comes with having a wife while you are his girlfriend. Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free type beat? What cohabitation does is take the expectations and roles of marriage and complicates them. Who is supposed to cook and clean? Who is supposed to do the laundry? Who is supposed to be the provider? Are y'all doing the 50-50 thing? Like, what are y'all doing? So usually what happens is a bunch of wasted time that could have been spent together under the covenant of marriage. I haven't even mentioned having kids. That just adds so much avoidable complexity to the situation. Now I'm going to insert an argument for living together before marriage. The most popular one is, how will I know that I can live with this person? My response to that is, you don't know. The point of marriage is figuring that out. But with that being said, you don't have to move in with somebody to figure out if they are dirty, trifling, and a bad person. Just pay attention. If you are around the person enough, you should be able to see exactly how they are living and exactly who they are. And if you can't, that either means you have poor assessment skills or you're with someone who is an exceptional liar and deceiver. But this is the way I see it. You don't marry someone you want to live with. You marry someone you don't want to live without. So let me throw in some scripture for y'all. The Bible doesn't explicitly speak on living together before marriage, 
but it also doesn't say anything about dating either but it does give us principles to live by romans 12 2 tells us not to conform to the patterns of this world moving in with your girlfriend or boyfriend is what culture promotes not god first corinthians 6 18 tells us to flee from sexual immorality so it's kind of hard to do that when you're living with your girl and she just got the shower no towel dripping wet and she give you that look you're probably gonna fold brother i'm gonna just keep it a buck if you play with fire long enough, you're going to get burned. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says to avoid the very appearance of evil. That sounds extreme, but in this case, it means that if you are cohabitating, people are going to automatically assume that y'all are fornicating, even if you aren't, which is highly unlikely. But as I said, all of these are Christian standards. I want to point out that I know several people who currently or formerly cohabitated and I love them to death. This is by no means a video of me looking down on others. I don't get caught up with other people's business if it doesn't affect me, but I also want us to live with wisdom. You can move in with someone you met two weeks ago and go on and have a beautiful marriage. You can even have done that without falling into temptation. Some people have very unique situations and there will always be exceptions. Just because you cohabitated doesn't mean your relationship is doomed to fail. But if you have a choice in the matter, always choose wisdom. Let me know what you think. Y'all be great, family. Easy. Team Reeves. Thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe and click here to watch more videos. Yeah. Na, na, na.